Chapter 20 of Commentary on the Book of Genesis. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Melvin Lee. Commentary on the Book of Genesis by Matthew Henry. Chapter 20. Genesis Chapter 20. We are here returning to the story of Abraham. Yet that part of it which is here recorded is not to his honor. The fairest marbles have their flaws, and while there are spots in the sun, we must not expect anything spotless under it. The scripture, it should be remarked, is impartial in relating the blemishes even of its most celebrated characters. We have here, numeral one, Abraham's sin in denying his wife, and Abimelech's sin thereupon in taking her. Verse 1 and 2. Numeral 2. God's discourse with Abimelech in a dream upon this occasion, wherein he shows him his error. Verse 3. And accepts his plea. Verse 4 through 6. And directs him to make restitution. Verse 7. Numeral 3. Abimelech's discourse with Abraham wherein he chides him for the cheat he had put upon him. Verse 8 through 10. And Abraham excuses it as well as he can. Verses 11 through 13. Numeral 4. The good issue of the story, in which Abimelech restores Abraham his wife. Verses 14 through 16. And Abraham, by prayer, prevails with God for the removal of the judgment Abimelech was under. Verse 17 and 18. Abraham's denial of his wife. B.C. 1898. Verse 1. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. Verse 2. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent, and took Sarah. Here is number one. Abraham's removal from Mamre, where he lived nearly twenty years, into the country of the Philistines. He sojourned in Gerar. Verse one. We are not told upon what occasion he removed, whether terrified by the destruction of Sodom, or because the country round was for the present prejudiced by it, or, as some of the Jewish writers say, because he was grieved at Lot's incest with his daughters, and the reproach which the Canaanites cast upon him and his religion. For his kinsmen's sake, doubtless there were some good cause for his removal. Note, in a world where we are strangers and pilgrims, we cannot expect to be always in the same place. Again, wherever we are, we must look upon ourselves but as sojourners. Number two, his sin is denying his wife, as before. Chapter 12, verse 13, which was not only in itself such an equivocation as bordered upon a lie, and which, if admitted was lawful, would be the ruin of human converse, and an inlet to all falsehood, but was also an exposing of the chastity and honor of his wife, of which he ought to have been the protector. But besides this, it had here a twofold aggravation. 1. He had been guilty of this same sin before, and had been reproved for it, and convinced of the folly of the suggestion which induced him to it, yet he returns to it. Note, it is possible that a good man may not only fall into sin, but relapse into the same sin through the surprise and strength of temptation and the infirmity of the flesh. Let backsliders repent then, but not despair. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 22. Number 2. Sarah, as it should seem, was now with child of the promised seed, or at least 
in expectation of being so quickly, according to the word of God. He ought, therefore, to have taken particular care for her now, as Judges, chapter 13, verse 4. Number 3. The peril that Sarah was brought into by this means. The king of Gerar sent, and took her to his house, in order to the taking of her to his bed. Note, the sin of one often occasions the sin of others. He that breaks the hedge of God's commandments opens a gaff to he knows not how many. The beginning of sin is as the letting forth of water. Verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Verse 4. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Verse 5. Said he not unto me, She is my sister. And she, even she herself, said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. Verse 6. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld from thee, sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. It appears by this that God revealed himself by dreams, which evidence themselves to be divine and supernatural not only to his servants the prophets but even to those who were out of the pale of the church and covenant but then usually it was with some regard to god's own people as in pharaoh's dream to joseph in nebuchadnezzar's to daniel and here in abimelech's to abraham and sarah for he reproved this king for their sake psalms chapter 55 verse 14 and 15 numeral one god gives him notice of his danger verse three his danger of sin telling him that the woman is a man's wife so that if he take her he will wrong her husband his danger of death is for sin thou art a dead man and god saying so of a man makes him so note every willful sinner ought to be told that he is a dead man as the condemned malefactor and the patient whose disease is mortal are said to be so if thou art a bad man certainly thou art a dead man numeral two he pleads ignorance that abraham and sarah had ag agreed to impose upon him and not to let him know that they were any more than brother and sister verse six see what confidence a man may have towards god when his heart condemns him not first john chapter three verse twenty one if our consciences witness to our integrity and that however we may have been cheated into a snare we have not knowingly and wittingly sinned against god it will be our rejoicing in the day of evil he pleads with God as Abraham had done. Chapter 18, verse 23. Wilt thou slay a righteous nation? Verse 4. Not such a nation as Sodom, which was indeed justly destroyed, but a nation which in this matter was innocent. Numeral 3. God gives a very full answer to what he had said. Number 1. He allows his plea and admits that what he did, he did in the integrity of his heart. Yea, I know it. Verse 6. Note. It is matter of comfort to those that are honest that God knows their honesty and will acknowledge it, though perhaps men that are prejudiced against them 
either cannot be convinced of it or will not own that they are number two he lets him know that he was kept from proceeding in the sin merely by the good hand of god upon him i withheld thee from sinning against me abimelech was hereby kept from doing wrong and abraham from suffering wrong and sarah from both note one there is a great deal of sin devised and designed that is never executed as bad as things are in the world they are not so bad as the devil and wicked men would have them two it is god that restrains men from doing the ill they would do it is not from him that there is sin but it is from him that there is not more sin either by his influence upon men's minds checking their inclination to sin or by his providence taking away the opportunity to sin number three it is a great mercy to be hindered from committing sin of this god must have the glory whoever is the instrument first samuel chapter twenty five verses thirty two and thirty three number three he charges him to make restitution now therefore not that thou art better informed restore the man his wife verse seven note ignorance will excuse no longer than it continues if we have entered upon a wrong course through ignorance this will not excuse our knowingly persisting in it leviticus chapter five verses three through five the reason why he must be just and kind to abraham are one because he is a prophet near and dear to god for whom god does in particular manner concern himself god highly resents the injuries done to his prophets and takes them as done to himself two being a prophet he shall pray for thee this is a prophet's reward and a good reward it is it is intimated that there was great efficacy in the prayers of a prophet and that good men should be ready to help those with their prayers that stand in need of them and should make at least this return for the kindnesses that are done them abraham was accessory to abimelech's trouble and therefore was obliged in justice to pray for him number three it is at thy peril if thou do not restore her know thou that thou shalt surely die note he that does wrong whoever he is prince or peasant shall certainly receive for the wrong which he has done unless he repent and make restitution colossians chapter three verse twenty five no injustice can be made passable with god no not by caesar's image stamped upon it abimelech's conduct towards abraham b c eighteen ninety eight verse eight therefore abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears and the men were sore afraid verse nine then abimelech called abraham and said unto him what hast thou done unto us and what have i offended thee that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done verse ten and abimelech said unto abraham what sawest thou that thou hast done this thing verse eleven and abraham said because i thought surely the fear of god is not in this place and they will slay me for my wife's sake verse twelve and yet indeed she is my sister she is the daughter of my father but not the daughter of my mother and she became my wife verse thirteen and it came to pass when god caused me to wander from my father's house but i said unto her this is thy kindness which thou shalt show unto me at every place whither we shall go say of me 
he is my brother. Abimelech, being thus warned of God in a dream, takes the warning, and, as one truly afraid of sin and its consequences, he rises early to obey the directions given him. Numeral 1. He has a caution for his servants. Verse 8. Abraham himself could not be more careful than he was to command his household in this matter. Note. Those whom God has convinced of sin and danger ought to tell others what God has done for their souls, that they also may be awakened and brought to a, a like holy fear. Numeral 2. He has a chiding for Abraham. Observe. Number 1. The serious reproof which Abimelech gave to Abraham. Verses 9 and 10. His reasoning with Abraham upon this occasion was very strong and yet very mild. Nothing could be said better. He does not reproach him nor insult over him. Does not he say, Is this your profession? I see, though, you will not swear. You will lie. If this be prophets, I will beg to be freed from the sight of them. But he fairly represents the injury Abraham had done him, and calmly signifies his resentment of it. 1. He calls that sin which he now found he had been in danger of a great sin. Note. Even the light of nature teaches men that the sin of adultery is a very great sin, be it observed to the shame of many who call themselves Christians, and yet make a light matter of it. Number two. He looks upon it that both himself and his kingdom would have been exposed to the wrath of God if he had been guilty of this sin, though ignorantly. Note, the sins of kings often prove the plagues of kingdoms. Rulers should therefore, for their people's sake, dread sin. Number three, he charges Abraham with doing that which was not justifiable in disowning his marriage. This he speaks of justly, and yet tenderly. He does not call him a liar and a cheat, but tells him he had done deeds that ought not to be done. Note. Equivocation is dissimulation. However, they may be palliated, and very bad things, and by no means to be admitted in any case. Number four. He takes it as a very great injury to himself and to his family, that Abraham had thus exposed them to sin. What have I offended thee? If I had been thy worst enemy, thou couldst not have done me a worse turn, nor taken a more effectual course to be revenged on me. Note. We ought to reckon that those do us the greatest unkindness in the world, that any way tempt us or expose us to sin, though they may pretend friendship and offer that which is grateful enough to corrupt nature. 5. He challenges him to assign a cause for his suspecting them as a dangerous people for an honest man to live among. What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? Verse 10. What reason hadst thou to think that if we had known her to be thy wife, thou wouldst have been exposed to any danger by it. Note. A suspicion of our goodness is justly reckoned a greater affront than a slight upon our greatness. Number two. The poor excuse that Abraham made for himself. Number one. He pleaded the bad opinion he had of the place. Verse eleven. He thought that within himself though he could not give any good reason for his thinking so, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and then they will slay me. 1. Little good is to be expected where no fear of God is. See Psalms, chapter 36, verse 1. 2. There are many places and persons that have more of a fear of God in them than we think they have. Perhaps, they are not called by our dividing name, they do not wear our badges, 
they do not tie themselves to that which we have an opinion of and therefore we conclude they have not the fear of god in their hearts which is very injurious both of christ and christians and makes us obnoxious to god's judgment matthew chapter seven verse one three uncharitableness and censoriousness are sins that are the cause of many other sins when men have once persuaded themselves concerning such and such that they have not the fear of god they think this will justify them in the most unjust and unchristian practices toward them men would not do ill if they did not first think ill two he excused it from the guilt of a downright lie by making it out that, in a sense, she was his sister. Verse 12. Some think she was own sister to Lot, who was called his brother Lot. Chapter 14. Verse 16. Though he was his nephew, so Sarah is called his sister. But to those whom he said, she is my sister, understood that she was so his sister has not to be capable of being his wife so that it was an equivocation with an intent to deceive three he clears himself from the imputation of an affront designed to abimelech in it by alleging that it had been his practice before according to an agreement between him and his wife when they first became sojourners verse 13 when god caused me to wander from my father's house then we settled this matter note one god is to be acknowledged in all our wanderings two those that travel abroad and converse much with strangers as they have need of the wisdom of the serpent so it is requisite that that wisdom be ever tempered with the innocence of the dove it may for aught i know be suggested that god denied to abraham and sarah the blessing of children so long to punish them for this sinful compact if they will not own their marriage why should god own it but we may suppose that after this reproof which abimelech gave them they agreed never to do so again and then presently we read chapter twenty one verse one and two that sarah conceived verse fourteen and abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto abraham and restored him sarah his wife verse fifteen and abimelech said behold my land is before thee dwell where it pleaseth thee verse sixteen and unto sarah he said behold i have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver behold he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other thus she was reproved verse seventeen so abraham prayed unto god and god healed abimelech and his wife and his maidservants and they bare children verse eighteen for the lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of abimelech because of sarah abraham's wife here is numeral one the kindness of a prince which abimelech showed to abraham see how unjust abraham's jealousies were he fancied that if they knew that sarah was his wife they would kill him but when they did know it instead of killing him they were kind to him frightened at least to be so by the divine rebukes they were under number one he gives them his royal license to dwell where he pleased in his country courting his stay because he gives him his royal gifts verse fourteen sheep and oxen and verse sixteen a thousand pieces of silver this he gave when he restored sarah either one by way of satisfaction for the wrong he had offered to do in taking her to his house when the philistines restored the ark 
being plagued for detaining it, they sent a present with it. The law appointed that, when restitution was made, something should be added to it. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 5 or 2 to engage Abraham's prayer for him not as if prayer should be bought and sold but we should endeavor to be kind to those of whose spiritual things we reap 1st Corinthians chapter 9 verse 11 note it is our wisdom to get and keep an interest with those that have an interest in heaven and to make those our friends who are the friends of God. 3. He gives to Sarah good instruction, tells her that her husband, her brother he calls him, to upbraid her with calling him so, must be to her a covering of the eyes, that is, she must look at no other, nor desire to be looked at by any other. Note. Yoke fellows must be to each other for a covering of the eyes. The marriage covenant is a covenant with the eyes, like Job's. Chapter 31, verse 1. Numeral 2. The kindness of a prophet, which Abraham showed to Abimelech, he prayed for him. Verse 17 and 18. This honor God would put upon Abraham that, though Abimelech had restored Sarah, yet the judgment he was under should be removed upon the prayer of Abraham, and not before. Thus God healed Miriam, when Moses, whom she had most affronted, prayed for her, Numbers chapter 12, verse 13, and was reconciled to Job's friends, when Job, whom they had grieved, prayed for them, Job chapter 42, verse 8 through 10, and so did, as it were, give it under his hand, that he was reconciled to them. Note, the prayers of good men may be a kindness to great men, and ought to be valued. End of chapter 20